Last time on Shadowsleeve, Nephis was kind enough to not command Sunny into her room and then taught us about citadels and that they are important for the clans to do their domain expansions. She then tells us that Valor and Song will do an Antarctica scavenge hunt with the Citadel Black Pyramid as the prize. And we also learn that both Nephis and Morgan will be there, which I really look forward to. Then it was a military stuff about dangerous corridors or something. And Nom Nom ate an MWP. <laughs> Chapter 1080 Marvelous Devil As a scout, Sunny constantly had to traverse great distances across the abomination-infested wilderness of East Antarctica. He would usually ride atop Nightmare or glide through the shadows with incredible speed. But right now, neither of these methods were an option. His steed was with Saint, and he obviously couldn't leave the stranded MWP pilot behind by turning into a shadow. Theoretically, Sonny could carry the young woman on his back and run, which would be faster than limiting his speed to that of a mundane human. Ew. <laughs> but he was not too desperate to save time. There was an army outpost relatively close to the ruined city. And although normal patrols would be slaughter if they tried to take the convenient shortcut, nothing that dwelled there could threaten Sunny. As they followed a small river that snaked between barrel hill barren hills, Sunny summoned the runes and glanced at the list of his shadows. It read Shadows Onyx Saint Soul Serpent Nightmare Ravenous Fiend Sunny concentrated on the last strings of runes, summoning a detailed description of the little bastard. Shadow, Revenous Fiend. Nom nom. Shadow Rank, Transcendent. Shadow Class, Devil. We know that Nom Nom, if it, Nom Nom had a true name, it would be Nom Nom. <laughs> Shadow Description. A pitiful little creature traveled through a nightmarish land, harboring a bitter grudge in its tiny heart. Driven by resentment and spite, it suffered many trials and conquered untold dangers to become a marvelous devil. But fate was unkind. The ravenous devil met a much more terrible fiend and turned into his shadow. Sunny stared at the runes with a bleak expression. The spell had always liked to tease him. At least he thought that it did, but this one was just unfair. How come I'm the fiend? The bastard literally has the word fiend in his name. Shaking his head, he moved past the description and continued to read. Shadow attributes. Lucky. Lucky. Marvel. Ravenous. Shadow sworn. Lesser iron body. Lucky. Attribute description. This shadow is favored by fortune. Hey! <laughs> Sunny side. His own attributes faded, attracted both incredible and absolutely terrible luck. The imp, however, was blessed with only good fortune. It was most likely the small scavenger's very first in an attribute. No wonder the bastard had survived meeting him twice. Damnation! Peeved by the blatant unfairness, Sunny continued to read. Marvel. Attribute description. This shadow is a marvelous learner. It is stunningly keen and supremely adaptable, absorbing new knowledge with astonishing speed. Lucky and smart. Well, who cares? At the end of the day, it, was still, it still didn't help him survive meeting me for the third time. If the wretch was so smart, he should have avoided me like a plague. Sunny had seen these descriptions before, of course, but he still couldn't help seething over them. Ravenous. Attribute description. This shadow possesses an insatiable hunger and a frightening potential for growth. The more it eats, the more it will grow. This attribute already seemed rather great, despite the fact that the imp had not grown even by a centimeter in the last two months. Sunny had fed him literally tons of armored alloy, as well as the corpses of many nightmare creatures with steel-like carap carapaces. He had no idea how much the little fiend had to gobble up to become bigger, but knew that the result would be worth it. The true benefit of the ravenous attribute was much more subtle, though, and incredibly precious. It was the fact that, unlike Nightmare and Saint, the imp did not need to consume memories to rise to a higher rank. That is pretty fucking convenient. 
there was no counter of shadow fragments. Instead, the fiendish shadow simply had to devour. It could become a supreme devil by simply devouring nightmare creatures, or any creatures, really, in great numbers. The more powerful, the better. That put Sunny, who was already suffering terribly from the need to procure countless memories, at ease. The imp is indeed lucky. If I had to choose between feeding memories a saint, a nightmare, or him, well, the poor bastard would have definitely starved. <laughs> no! Nom nom needs to consume. Sunny smiled slightly and turned his attention to the last two attributes. Shadow Sworn. Attribute Description. This fiend is known to shadows. That one was without surprise, and appeared after Sunny had fed the imp with his flesh. It was the same as what Shadowblade Kurth had possessed. A shout, uh, a shout, and showed a high affinity to shadows. Lesser Iron Body, Attribute Description. This shadow's flesh possessed the qualities of metal. He grinned in satisfaction. Finally, progress! The lesser, lesser iron body had been nascent iron body before. It seemed that munching on that MWP had finally pushed him over a threshold. He would be much sturdier now, and in the future would even have a chance to become truly indestructible. There had to be a greater iron body as well, after all. Right? <laughs> Happy to see the ankle biter <laughs> achieving something, Sunny finally glanced at the imp's abilities. The runes read. Shadow abilities. Scavenger. Devourer. Shadow step. Scavenger. Ability description. This shadow can attain the traits, attributes, and abilities of the creatures it consumes. Devourer. Ability description. This shadow's teeth possess unnatural sharpness and strength. It can rend and maul even the most resilient things. Shadow Step Ability Description This fiend can move freely between shadows, traveling from one to another in an instant or diving into them to move with great speed. And that was it. Sunny's fourth shadow. The critter was a sorry excuse of a transcendent devil, for now. Hey! But it would grow to be a real menace one day. In fact, Sunny had a feeling that the imp might just become one of the most terrifying weapons in his arsenal. The ravenous fiend had been an exceedingly dire enemy, but now that he was serving Sunny and thus enjoying the support of a benevolent, selfless, and supremely generous master, just how much more terrible would the wretched wave become? Supremely generous, selfless. <laughs> Sure, Sunny, sure. Walking along the small river, Sunny used Shadow Manifestation to slaughter a nightmare creature that was waiting to ambush him and the MWP pilot, then sighed. I need to find a couple more of those iron golems I killed last week. Or better yet, a whole swarm of them. A horde would be even better. My imp is a growing little wretch, after all. He needs to eat. <laughs> It's all true, he can't lie. Yeah, only to himself. <laughs> as long as he believes in it, right? Oh, true, yes. <laughs> Chapter 1081, Lake Bruin. Soon they reached the army outpost. There had been a few nightmare creatures that attacked them on the way, including an especially vile corrupted monster. Sunny tore the former apart with hands woven out of shadows, and cut the latter down personally with the blade created the same way. These days, he tried to avoid getting his own hands dirty, mostly using shadow manifestation to slaughter the enemy. Why? Sunny wanted to hone and refine his mastery of manifestation, and for that he needed a lot of practice. Ah, oh, so it's poor practice, not about his hands being dirty. Got it. Sure. Additionally, he felt that it was unnecessary for him to get up close and personal with every godforsaken abomination standing in his way. Yes, understandable. Perhaps it was the nature of his current mission as a solitary scout, or perhaps Sonny had simply received a change to return to being cautious and stealthy after years of being forced to play the role of a frontline fighter. In any case, he strived to only enter melee range with an enemy if he was certain of killing the foe with a single strike. Usually, one of Sunny's strikes was enough, 
If not, he would avoid a confrontation entirely. The army outpost was located underground. Similar to the supply depot, he was visited once in the Antarctic center. However, as a member of the special reconnaiss <laughs> reconnaissance unit, can we go back saying SRU? SR <laughs> Sonny knew very well where all the army assets were hidden. Better yet, East Antarctica had no problems with communications. Well, except for the usual interference of the call. So he had been able to radio about their arrival in advance. Oh, I said it right. Yay! The answer to your questions continued to be on the next line. Yeah, that's usually how it goes, but I will still ask the questions. <laughs> So people understand what's going on in my mind. <laughs> Sunny and the surviving MWP pilots were met by a cohort of sleep-deprived awakened. Despite their visible fatigue, the soldiers stood at attention and saluted him respectfully. Their eyes betrayed a hint of reverence. This again. Sunny was met with such stares anywhere he went in Antarctica, at least among the soldiers. The first army and the second army were merged into one military now. But within it, people who had been in the southern quadrant since day one of the Chain of Nightmares were treated with silent respect. That went tenfold for those who had been a part of the Antarctic Center contingent. contingent. The Antarctic Center had been the most terrifying battlefield of the operation yet, and almost the entire field army sent there had been wiped out. There were only a few survivors here and there, mostly those who had been among the evacuated wounded. Needless to say, Sunny was both a veteran of the Antarctic Center and an Ascended. That was why most soldiers treated him with veneration. Master Stunless, sir! He nodded at the welcoming party and handed over the MWP pilot to them. The young woman had done well at keeping pace with him on the way to the outpost. But now that they had reached safety, she looked to be on the verge of collapse. <laughs> of course, it was not at all surprising. Sunny, please! <laughs> Sunny sighed and glanced at the awakened. At ease. To good care of take good care of the lieutenant. Oh, and by the way, I have cleared a path through the hills and dealt with the corrupted monster that had been stalking the area. If you hurry, you might harvest what is left of it before abominations show up. The soldiers looked at each other, their eyes glinting. That monster had been causing a lot of trouble for the outpost, especially considering that it had blocked the pathway through the hills. With the creature gone, logistics would become much easier for them. Thank you, sir! Sunny nodded. Well then, I'll be off. He looked at the MWP pilot, lingered for a few moments, and then said awkwardly, Stay alive, soldier. <laughs> <laughs> With that, Sunny stepped through the shadows and disappeared from view. He had wasted a lot of time already and was running late for the rendez rendezvous with Soul Reaper. That was awkward indeed, wasn't it? <laughs> Even I was <laughs> by myself. <laughs> the soldiers remained standing there for a while, staring at the empty space where he had stood before. Eventually, one of them said, That was him, the devil. Another nodded with a stunned face. But of course, Sunny was already far away and did not hear any of it. The sun was circling in the sky, never falling behind the horizon. He glided through the shadows where he could, ran where he couldn't, ran where he couldn't. <laughs> From time to time, Sunny simply hid in the shadows, waiting for large swarms of nightmare creatures to pass by. These pauses slowed him down, but they also allowed him to recover some essence. I used to fall back to the... Uh, Sonny was already far away and did not hear any of it, like that they're uh, talking about him. I wonder how he is perceived in the... I was going to say in the waking world, but they're literally there. It just feels like they're in the dream realm. But, you know, like back on his continent or whatever. Like when he comes home, if everyone would be like, Oh my god, that's the devil from Antarctica, you know, like... He's the one that dates Mongol. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's Bongo's boyfriend! <laughs> like, I wonder what it will be like, or if they're more like, oh, this is what happens in Antarctica, but they're not talking, like, no way they're not talking about Sunny on the news, right? What's his sister gonna say? True. Then again, I f 
Right, right. We still are, we are in contact with Rain now because we have communication. So I feel like Rain would be like, I saw you in the news, you know? So maybe they actually don't. Hmm. Or maybe when we get there, he will be like, oh, but Sunny already knew this because he's heard it's from Rain. <laughs> but they're not telling us in this second. I have no idea. We'll see. But I, I wonder how it will be then. Or everyone would be like, dude, Valor and Song is having a war. Who cares about Devil, Sunny, and Mongrel at the moment, you know? Who knows? He avoided getting into fights to preserve more of it as well. And also because there was no reason to. It was already evening, or whatever passed for one in this strange land, when Sunny drew near another ruin. The city in front of him was almost entirely destroyed and drowned by a vast lake with only the remains of a tall tower, tall towers rising above the icy water. The ruin was different from one from before, and much older. It had been left behind by the wars that humans waged on each other during the dark times, not a rampage of the chain of nightmares. Nevertheless, the drowned city was Sunny's current mission. I don't know if news will tell which commander dates who. Yeah, but this is not any commander. <laughs> This is fucking mongrel. But then again, I it's like, I don't know what you would say. Like, the Antarctica campaign is going good. Like, I don't know how the news are. But yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> I just want to know how he's perceived when he comes back. I wonder if it changed. He hid himself in the shadows of a rusted wreck and studied the ruin. There were bodies of nightmare creatures floating near one of the towers, painting the water black. Each of them seemed to have been killed by a single arrow. Sunny observed the area for a few minutes, noticing strange ripples on the surface of the lake. There were more abominations hiding under water. Finally satisfied, he activated his calm and contacted Jet. Reaper, it's Devil. <laughs> he is Devil now. I can't. I've arrived. A few seconds later, her voice came through the static. Took you long enough. Where are you? I'm sorry. Took you long enough. Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> he looked around. Southern shore, near an old wreck on the slope of a flat hill. Jet took a few minutes to respond. I see it. Move west for about a kilometer, then follow a collapsed tower into the lake. From there, you'll be able to see three huge smokestacks. I'm in the middle one, near the top. Get here as soon as possible, and be careful of the water. It is teeming with schools of tiny, hungry fishes. Sunny lingered for a moment. Got it. What about the target? Soul Reaper responded in a few seconds, her voice sounding a bit tense. It's in the middle of the lake. I was waiting for you to arrive before trying to get a better look. Nodding, Sunny glanced at the ripples in the cold water one more time, and then dashed out of his shelter. Scary fish. Chapter 1082. Ancient Chimneys. He reached the giant chimney without too much problem, avoiding the teeth of the vicious fish-like creatures with the help of the Darkwing and a couple of perilous leaps. Perilous leaps. The structure was wide and incredibly tall, reaching at least 300 meters into the sky. And that was just a past... No, and that was just the part visible above the water. There were a few holes in the frame of the alloy smoke sta stack, so Sunny did not waste time jumping through one of them. He found himself in a vast dark well, still water radiating bone chilling cold a few meters beneath his feet. A tiny circle of light was visible hundreds of meters above. Sunny did not know what kind of industrial behemoth had demanded such an enormous chimney. Three of them, in fact. And what kind of poison had been billowing out of them into the atmosphere in the past? However, even now, decades or even centuries later, the air inside was acrid and hard to inhale, reminding him of the worst days in the outskirts. Grimacing, Sunny looked around and then jumped to a piece of scaffolding at a dozen or so meters above his current position. Landing noiselessly on the weathered alloy, he smiled at Saint, who had been standing there, still as a statue, holding a bow in one hand. 
the taciturn knight turned her head slightly, acknowledging his arrival, then indifferently continued to watch the base of the smokestack. He could feel Nightmare hiding in the darkness nearby, dissolved into the shadow form. The black steed moved, greeting him, and then grew still once again. Good work, guys. I don't know, this is so weird <laughs> that he talks. I was like, I guess you... I would. It's like talking to your dog or your, your pet, you know? It's like... I guess. <laughs> Sunny's calm hissed. Get up here. I'm bored out of my mind. He sighed, then turned into a shadow himself and ascended the tall structure, gliding upward in a wide spiral. As Sonny was going up the old alloy walls, he found himself involuntarily thinking about how long it would take Imp to eat the whole thing. <laughs> then he caught himself and scoffed. God, what am I thinking about? But it was really a lot of alloy. At the top of the smokestack, strange machines were installed into the mouth of the well, and the walls were blackened by fire and soot. The acrid smell was somewhat reduced by the proximity to the open sky. Jet was sitting in one of the pieces of machinery, her feet hanging above the abyssal drop. Noticing Sunny step out of the shadows, she closed the lid of an army-issued thermos, threw it into her backpack and grinned. Here you are. He nodded. Yeah, sorry for making you wait. So Reaper shook her head. I've been on a long recon... Reconnaissance, reconnaissance, recon mission for an entire week. For the entire week. Honestly, having a chance to just sit and relax for a few hours was exactly what I needed. Jet had joined the special re reconnaissance, reconnaissance re <gasps> unit, just like Sunny. They, I need to look this up. <laughs> How do you say this word? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Reconnaissance? Reconnaissance? Reconnaissance, bro, are you joking? Reconnaissance. Reconnaissance. <laughs> Reconnaissance? Is that it? <laughs> Reconnaissance. <laughs> Reconnaissance. Let's see how long I will remember. I have to say, I will have the page up. <laughs> I struggle with that word too, and English is my first language. Bro, like, what the fuck? Reconnaissance. Okay, but now it's hard. Okay, now it's easier to say. Reconnaissance. I just have to remember it. That's the hard part. <laughs> That's my issue. Remembering until I see it next time. That'll be like, Rick, on. Reconnaissance. <laughs> Jet had joined the special reconnaissance unit, just like Sunny. They mostly worked alone, but for the most dangerous missions, Army Command grouped two or more scouts together. As a result, the two of them continued to cooperate and fight side by side through most of the past few months. By now, they made for a very good team. Jet stood up and looked around, studying the ancient machinery. Hey, do you know what these things were for? Sunny shook his head. No. Do you? She walked along the edge of the alloy platform and nodded. It's a filtration system. Basically, one furnace pushed a constant stream of toxic smoke through the smokestack, and on top of it was another furnace. This one meant to burn all the toxicity out of the smoke and prevent it from getting into the atmosphere. So, each of these chimneys used to shoot out a colossal plume of fire into the sky. Must have been quite a sight, especially in winter. Sunny scratched the back of his head. Sounds kind of stupid. <laughs> Jet glanced at him with a bleak expression. Well, I'm not an engineer. It must have worked. Otherwise, why waste all that time and energy on construction filters? Anyway, let's get to the top. The faster we finish the mission, the faster we can get the hell out of this stench. They scaled the last dozen or so meters of the smokestack using an ancient rickety ring ladder. <laughs> rickety ring ladder. <laughs> and climbed onto the lip of the giant chimney. It was as wide as a road. From here, most of the lake and the city drowned by it could be easily seen. Sunny stared down, approaching the surreal beauty of the desolate landscape beneath... Why do I say approaching? It doesn't say approaching. 
appreciating the surreal beauty of the desolate landscape beneath them. I was like, did he fall? <laughs> He's approaching the landscape fast. <laughs> Almost at the same time, two of the shadows reached the top of the other two giant smokestacks. Jet glanced at him. Well, he hesitated for a few moments. The one to our left is empty, but the right one, there is something hiding inside. Something huge. All the shadow could see were loops of flesh coiled inside the dark well of the ancient smokestack, filling almost a third of it. Jet sighed with relief. Well, good. Because we need to get to the left one. Leave that thing, whatever it is, alone. Sunny nodded, ordering a shadow to hide itself and keep an eye on the gargantuan creature. The three towering chimneys were not too far away from each other, so getting from one to another was not a problem to them. However, it was not very safe. If something attacked you in the air, staying alive would be a challenge. So unless someone like Kai was around, at least two people were required to keep each other safe. Sunny temporarily borrowed Morgan's warbow from Saint and covered Jet as she glided across the wide gap between smokestacks using a flight memory. She reached the next chimney, then summoned half a dozen sharp throwing stars and did the same for him. Sunny used the Darkwing to breach the gap and soon joined Jet. Now they were very close to coming in sight of the target of this mission. He frowned. Do you feel it? Soul Reaper slowly nodded. Yeah, the call is much stronger here. There must be a Category 3 gate nearby. They walked to the opposite side of the smokestack and looked down. From that position, nothing obstructed their view of the middle of the lake. And there, nestled between the ancient ruins. Sunny sighed. That is going to be trouble. Is it a gate? They would assume... You would assume that it's a gate. Chapter 1083. Vita. <laughs> Re <laughs> Re <laughs> Reconnaissance. 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 Oh, yay! <laughs> Damn, he really had to do me like this? That's crazy. <laughs> Reconnaissance? Reconnaissance. Re reconnaissance. Reconnaissance. The two of them lowered themselves to the weathered alloy, looking cautiously over the edge. Far away in the middle of the ruined city, an enormous body of a ghastly creature was hidden between the rubble. Long swaths of it submerged into the water. The creature resembled a monstrous centipede that was at least a hundred meters long. <laughs> it was encased in pale chitin. No, not chitin. Shitin. <laughs> Bone. The giant centipede seemed to be covered in countless thousands of human skulls. All of them stuck together to form a morbid carapace. Really? Bro, you had to go fucking reconnaissance, chitin, shitin, and carapace at the same time? Dude, it's... Are you fucking... Like, he hates me. <laughs> now this is war. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> what? Okay, sure. Its horrid maw was large enough to swallow an armored, armored APC and full of grotesque, bone-white teeth. On its head, two tall, dead trees grew from the carapace of skulls like skeletal horns. Making a point to only keep the abominable creature in his peripheral vision and not stare at it directly, Powerful abominations could often sense a gaze directed at them. Sunny sighed. That is going to be trouble. He had chosen to remain as quiet as possible, relying on the blessing of dusk to convey his thoughts to Jet instead of speaking aloud. She nodded, then responded in the same manner, her voice resounding clearly inside his head despite the deathly silence and the hollowing, howling of the wind. No, <laughs> the hollow wind. Look at its mouth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sunny turned his head a little and watched. Far below them, the centipede twisted his long neck and convulsed, heaving. Ugh. 
Then it opened its maw and vomited out a huge pile of moist, slime-covered bones. Oh, that's so For a few moments, it looked as if the abomination was having problems digesting its prey. Then, however, the pile of bones moved, slowly coalescing into a nightmarish, misshapen creature. Oh, okay, it's creating minions, I see. The revolting bone monster rose shakily to its varied limbs and staggered away, soon disappearing beneath the water. Looking at the surface of the lake, Sunny frowned. How many of these creatures had the centipede created already? He lingered for a moment and glanced at Jet. It's a corrupted tyrant. She grimaced. Yeah, it seems that way. So Reaper cautiously opened her backpack and took out several bulky devices. Those were sensor arrays and recorders the army had issued to them, all based on complicated spell tech technology. The bulk mostly came from various isolating agents the designers wrapped the sensitive internals in, hoping to negate the detrimental effects of the <laughs> detrimental effects of the call. Sadly, the interference of the nearby gate was too strong for the spelltech equipment to achieve anything. After several minutes of fruitless attempts to gather data, Jet sighed, glanced at Sunny, and shook her head. He gave her a shrug. Contact Army Command, then. She remained motionless for a few moments, then moved away from the edge of the smokestack's lip and activated her military comm. The static noise must have been dreadful, but Jet still managed to deliver a message. HQ, this is Recon 4 and Recon 9. We are at the mission site. Target visual confirmed. Threat level Core 5. Core 5. Requesting analyst support. <laughs> we have nothing on this. Soul Reaper waited for a few moments, then raised three fingers into the air. That meant that they had to wait for three minutes. Fast. HQ is either not too busy today or sees this mission as a top priority. The former seemed unlikely, so it was probably the latter. With a sigh, he summoned a memory. Soon, a circle of green patinated bronze appeared in his hands, with a lens of roughly polished crystal encased within. Right, he has like a fucking thingy, binoculars or whatever, right? The antique looking glass was both pretty, sim pretty simple and interesting in function. It was a twin memory. Somewhere in the army headquarters, there was an awakened wielding an identical care of patina covered bronze and the two were connected. That allowed the diviners and other analysts to extend their senses across the continent even if the technological solutions failed. Or it's not the binocular. binoculars. What the fuck is this? Memories like this were rare and extremely precious, but each of the scouts serving in the special... <sighs> reconnaissance... unit had been issued one. Sunny shifted slightly and aimed the looking glass at the distant centipede. A couple of minutes later, he sensed the memory reaching for its essence and poured a generous amount of it into the murky crystal. The connection was established. That's crazy. Jet crawled back and pressed herself into the cold alloy by his side. After a few seconds, she sent Sunny a mental message. They're looking. Down in the ruins, the ghastly centipede heaved out another bone monstrosity and swayed its head slightly, as if sensing some disturbance. Both Sunny and Jet froze, holding their breaths. Shivering in the wind, he made a miserable face. That's so unfair. I'm the only one who actually needs to breathe. Because <laughs> Jet is dead. <laughs> a few minutes passed in tense silence. Then a few more. Eventually, Sunny felt the bronze circle fa fall asleep. The pull on his essence disappeared as well. That moment, Jet glanced at him. Seems like army command is on the edge about that thing. They need some time to arrange an appropriate response, though. We're to stay here and observe, reporting immediately if it starts moving. Then he sighed and looked around. At that height, the wind was strong and chilly. There was no shelter on the alloy lip of the giant chimney, and the acrid smell could still be felt here, permeating the air. He shook his head in resignation. Great, I'll take a nap then. Jet blinked a couple of times. Hey, how come you get to sleep first? I haven't slept in a week. <sighs> Sunny stared at her gloomily and sighed again. Fine, you go first. I'll keep an eye on the tyrant. 
Soul Reaper flashed him a smile, then turned on her side, put the backpack under her head, and seemed to immediately pass out. Sunny was left to observe the appalling giant centipede alone. He chewed on his lip. Why does she even need to sleep? She's dead! <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. I was like, okay, sure. Sadly, Jet was already blissfully asleep. The tyrant methodically continued to create bone puppets, seemingly oblivious to the fact that it was being watched. The mysterious being hid hiding in another smokestack similarly remained passive. A few hours passed. Sunny patiently waited until the shift was over, then woke up Jet and handed the responsibility of keeping watch on the tyrant to her. Tired and bored, he tried to get comfortable on the cold alloy and closed his eyes. Seemingly, a second later, Jet shook him awake. It's on the move. Sunny rubbed his eyes and groggily looked down. The enormous centipede was slithering through the shallow water, and the surface of the lake around it was boiling. Hundreds of bone abominations were following the pallid creature, much more than he had expected there to be. Crap. So Reaper was already reporting to Army Command. Half a dozen seconds later, she started crawling away from the edge. They are sending two entire companies to deal with it. The Wolves and the Night Singers. We are to follow the thing and inform Army Command on its movements, then rendezvous with the assault force and help them take the abomination down. Sunny was already moving, the bronze-looking glass dissolving into a stream of sparks in his hand. Despite the perilous situation, a crooked smile appeared in his face. The Wolves and the Night Singers, huh? It seems I'll be spending some quality time with Effie and Kai soon. I was gonna say, I was like, the wolves and the night singers. I was like, that fucking, that has to be. And I was like, wait. <laughs> I was like, no. Or they just made that. And then I was like, oh, that's Effie and Kai. Because <laughs> she's the wolf and he's the night singer. Anyway. Crazy! <laughs> First time meeting them in Antarctica! <sighs> Chapter 1084 Following the Tyrant For the next few days, Sunny and Jet stealthily pursued the Skull Centipede. These days were long, tense, and perilous. Not only did they have to brave the wilderness, but they also had to keep up with the ghastly abomination while not being seen or sensed by it. On a few occasions, they had almost been discovered, barely managing to salvage the situation at the last moments. Sunny was not sure what would have happened if the creature had found them. With Saint supporting the two scouts from the shadows, they at least had a slim chance of slaying the tyrant. But a battle like that would be a dire one. It would have had to be one of those battles where he was forced to put everything on the line, only surviving by the skin of his teeth. In the past, Sunny had fought plenty of battles like that. He had grown so used to walking the thin line between life and death that he did not even consider such things unusual anymore. That mad balancing act was just par for this course. However, he also knew that he would not remain on the winning side forever. If he kept risking everything, his luck was bound to run out one day. After Falcon Scott, his way of thinking about things shifted. Sunny was now much more experienced, and with that experience came cold, calculating prudence. His chances of defeating the Skull Centipede and its army of bone abominations would be much higher with the support of two entire companies of Awakened, and so he was determined to meet their en this enemy on a battlefield of his choosing, with the odds stacked in his favor as much as the circumstances allowed. Jet was of the same mind. They followed the plan and put all their effort into remaining hidden. The centipede slithered across the vast plains of East Antarctica, eviscerating everything in its path. It had no mercy for the other nightmare creatures, slaughtered swarms of them like helpless ants. After each massacre, the giant abomination would devour the corpses of its prey and coil its body into a macabre burrow of skulls, then wreathe and spew out more bone fiends. Hmm. The centipede's army continued to grow as it advanced through the wilderness. With each day, Sunny and Jet grew... Grew? Sunny and Jet grew, became more and more despondent. 
It had been hard to tell at the start, but now there was no denying it. What the fuck? I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what happened. The tyrant's course put in... <sighs> the, the tyrant's course put it on a direct collision course with one of the siege capitals in East Antarctica. Each human stronghold on the continent was surrounded by vast masses of frenzied nightmare creatures and even more dead ones. Tall, tall piles of bodies covered the killing fields, growing with each passing day. If the school centipede was allowed to launch an attack on a siege capital, it would already be bad enough. However, if it managed to gain access to all those corpses, the strength of its army would increase exponentially, and the threat posed by the creature would explode in magnitude. By then, only the invention of a saint would prevent the disaster. The saints, however, were already busy racing endlessly from place to place, solving one crisis after another without rest. Which was why it was important to stop the abomination as soon as possible. On the fourth day of the pursuit, the centipede clashed with a whole horde of nightmare creatures, butchering hundreds of them and scaring the rest away. It dragged its massive body onto the battlefield, then got to the gri grisly business of consuming all the mangled bodies. One dead abomination after another disappeared into its massive maw, emotionlessly swallowed by the dreadful tyrant. Sunny and Jet were observing the process from a safe distance as they hid between two enormous boulders. On the ground between them lay a scattering of bleeding carcasses. They themselves had engaged in a short and gruesome fight with a pack of nightmare creatures just minutes ago. Now that a suitable shelter was cleared, they could rest easy for a few hours. Sunny frowned. It killed too many this time. Considering how long it takes to create a bone soldier, I'd say we'll be stuck here for a full day. The tyrant's army will grow by a lot. Jet shrugged. The more it is delayed, the better. Army command will have time to prepare. She watched a giant centipede devour its victims for a few moments and took a few steps back and contacted the headquarters to make a report. Soon after that, Soul Reaper's icy blue eyes suddenly gleamed. Understood. She deactivated her calm and looked at Sunny with a grin. It's happening. The welcoming party has already arrived. We need to overtake the monstrosity, meet up with them, and prepare the festivities. Sunny let out a relieved sigh. Finally. A hunt like this one was not easy to arrange. Simply deploying troops outside the siege capital was a dangerous task by now. The wilderness was teeming with numerous nightmare creatures, and an expedition force risked drowning in a horde of them before even reaching the intended target. It took a lot of courage and competence to navigate the course through the enemy territory. If the target was on the move, the task only grew that much harder. Luckily, this time, Army Command was receiving constant updates on the street creature's location from Sunny and Jet, so tracking its path had been easier. And now, finally, almost every piece was in place. All that remained was for the scouts to join the assault force and spring the trap on the menacing tyrant. Sunny smiled. Let's go then. The silently abandoned their they silently abandoned their shelter and made a wide circle around the location of the skull centipede, then moved away with as much speed as they could allow themselves without risking attracting the attention of migrating hordes of nightmare creatures. Half a day later, Sunny and Jet arrived at the shore of a wide river. The landscape made it so that there weren't many places to cross it for many kilometers around, with only a single ford formed by a scattering of giant boulders. As they traversed the river, jumping from one stone to another, Sunny's calm suddenly came alive. A familiar voice came through the static. Well, it isn't... Frog. Welcome. <laughs> Frog. <laughs> Some of it got swallowed up by the interference, but the last word was very easy to discern. Dopus. <laughs> you know it was F you said frog. Sunny stopped for a moment and looked at the opposite bank of the river, where a tall figure suddenly arose from the ground. Effie waved her hand and grinned. Ah, venerable Master Selmus, how nice of you to pay a visit. Oh, yay! 
He's here. Chapter 1085, Wolf Army. Sunny and Jet looked like quite the pair. Both were wearing black, which made for a stark contrast with their pale skin and raven hair. Granted, Soul Reaper looked more imposing in her fitting black leather armor. Sunny, on the other hand, wore a simple silk tunic and pair of dainty shoes. He was also unarmed. Actually, he was perhaps the most threatening of the two. People were used to seeing Awaken wear suits of impregnable armor and wield powerful weapons. It was a sight of someone who didn't feel the need to do so, even in the deadly reaches of East Antarctica, that was truly frightening. He made the last jump, landing softly on the ground not too far away from Effie. From here, Sunny could sense hundreds of shadows somewhere nearby. He looked around, noticing mundane soldiers and Awaken hidden here and there along the river shore, all keeping watch on the surrounding area. The first irregular company had numbered 42 Awaken and 7 Masters. The two companies Effie and Kai commanded, however, were different. Unlike the special unit Sunny had belonged to, these were companies meant for general combat. Each of them consisted of close to 100 Awakened and 10 times that many mundane soldiers. Complete with a platoon of mighty MWPs and a robust stable of specialized vehicles that ranged from heavy artillery to support and resupply. Two of these companies together made for a small army. Effie walked over, a wide smile on her face. Sunny! Long time no see! She looked quite impactful. His friend had always been a sight to behold, with her impassively, impressively tall stature, athletic build, and generous figure. Now, however, Effie resembled an incarnation of a beautiful war deity, much more than she resembled a mere mortal. The main reason for this was her armor. It was as though Effie had been dipped in liquid steel, which then clung tightly to her body, tracing every toned, graceful line of it. Sunny had once thought that the undying shade felt like a second layer of skin. However, in his case, that was simply a metaphor. The armor of the vibrant huntress, on the contrary, could be described the same way quite literally. Cool. <laughs> there was a piece of white cloth tied around her waist, and another one covering her chest. But other than that, Effie's whole body was exposed. <laughs> okay, that's not what I pictured. <laughs> but okay. Uh, uh. <sighs> Effie's whole body was exposed and seemed as if it had been cast of lustrous steel. Only her head was uncovered, for now. What the fuck? That armor, of course, was the transcendent memory she had received after slaying one of the immortal Shane Lords of the Kingdom of Hope, the Sun Prince. Oh. Sunny coughed. Just looking at Effie would make one's blood run hot. <laughs> that wasn't... Stop. But that wasn't all. Currently, she had not even activated her ascended ability. Once she did, the fire burning in the hearts of the soldiers who saw her would become quite real, coursing through their veins and granting them actual power. <laughs> it was as though raised by wolves was sharing some of her astonishing physical might with her followers. <laughs> physical might. Sure. An involuntary smile found its way into Sunny's face. What are you talking about? We saw each other two weeks ago. Yeah, but that doesn't count, bro. That wasn't a dream realm. Effie shook her head energetically. That doesn't count. <laughs> See? Every time you come to the island, you and Cassie immediately sink to the basement to spend a few quality hours closely studying the floor. The two of us, though, haven't had proper fun in ages. She grinned and then shifted her gaze to Jet, who was listening to their conversation with a strange expression on her face. Oh, and welcome to you, too. Miss Soul Reaper. <laughs> and you as well. <laughs> Thanks for keeping this dope as alive. I know he's a handful. No, son, Evie is not sassy like that. <laughs> After saying that last part, Evie lingered for a moment and winked. <laughs> Jed blinked a couple of times. The two of them met a few times, but she had not really been exposed to Evie's personality before. Oh my god. Sunny couldn't tell if she was bewildered or abused. <laughs> Eventually, Soul Reaper smiled a little. Sure, call me Jet. Why does she feel uncomfortable? <laughs> He's like, but, okay. He stared at them with a glum expression. Keeping me alive, really. 
That's funny. Don't you have a habit of occasionally trying to kill me? Soul Reaper's smile turned into a grin. Oh, come on. I haven't tried to kill you in at least a couple of months. So I don't know where this is coming from. Sunny shook his head, then glanced at Effie and smiled. It's good to see you too, Effie. He looked around and asked. Where's the other one? The other one! Don't do Kyle. The other one. <laughs> she nodded and gestured for them to follow. He's asleep. Now that the battle is drawing close, the two of us take turns sleeping. Both of us need to be fresh for the battle with the tyrant, while at least one has to be awake at all times before that, so... That arrangement works. They walked up the slope of the shore. Gradually, the hidden camp of the small army revealed itself, with hundreds of soldiers soberly, soberly preparing for the upcoming battle. Awakened, mundane soldiers, MWP pilots, operators of combat vehicles, all of them were throwing wide-eyed glances at the three masters. Who is that with the boss? Are those the SRU scouts? Hell yeah. Is it me or is our boss acting too friendly with that guy? Gosh, isn't that Soul Reaper Jet? Holy hell, that's Soul Reaper and Devil! No way, let me see! <laughs> I heard the two of them fought a corrupted titan in the Antarctic center. That can't be right, can it? They wouldn't be alive if they did. Soul Reaper might be tough, but our boss is definitely tougher. I only saw a devil slaughter an entire shar so charm swarm of nightmare creatures without lifting a finger. He just stood there, and they were all shredded into little pieces. I swear to God, it's true! Sunny ignored the whispers and followed Effie. The shadows, however, took a good look around. He was about to go into battle side by side with these people, so we had to know all about them. The soldiers of the two companies looked competent, determined, and in high spirits. The wolves and the night singers were technically not counted as special forces, but among the rank and file of the evacuation army, they had already earned the reputation of elite units. They were led by the two of the most fearsome masters in the world, after all. The soldiers were mixed among each other, but funnily enough, it was easy to see which belonged to which company. The wolves were more boisterous, lively, and rough around the edges. The night singers were more calm, reserved, and good-natured. It was as if they had assumed the personalities of their leaders. Oh my god. Sonny smiled with the corner of his mouth, then took his head. Then shook his head. They walked along a row of camouflaged tents and approached a particular one, which looked no different from all the others. Effie suddenly made a fist and banged it against her bare thigh producing a loud metallic ring. Wake up, birdie! The most honest person in two worlds is here! <laughs> That's us! Chapter 1086. Shared pain. No, no pain. Happy! We're happy! Oh. There was some rustling inside the tent, and then Kai emerged from it, looking as handsome and dazzling as ever. No, even more so. Sunny's face became a little dull. His friend had reached borderline criminal levels of attractiveness after becoming a master. Criminal levels, that's... Mesmerizing most mundane humans by simply appearing in front of them. But Sunny had thought that a couple of months in the mud and muck of Antarctica would rub some of that glamour off. However, he had been sorely mistaken. If anything, Kai only became more captivating. His natural charm had acquired a hint of reserved military valiance, becoming more subdued, but also much more arresting. <laughs> I swear Sonny's in love with Kai. <laughs> His green eyes were still as electric as ever, but now there was a quiet, almost melancholic depth to them that made one deeply desire to comfort and console the young man. Those eyes were nothing short of compelling. Kai smiled, making all three of them, Sunny, Effie, and Jet, hold their breaths for a moment. Like, he's insane. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? Sunny, Ascended Jet, it is so good to see you. It's so good to see you. Sunny, Ascended Jet, <laughs> it is so good to see you in my humble establishment. Come, have some tea. <laughs> Imagine if he talked like that. <laughs> we just, I make him posh. <laughs> You just changed Kai's personality entirely. <laughs> yes, it's me. I won't. <laughs> but I thought about it. <laughs> yeah. 
Even his voice was like a soothing melody. Yes. <laughs> that bastard. Maybe he sings everything. Sonny, I send a jet. It is so good to see you. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Sonny wasn't even angry about how stunning his friend was. What really disheartened him was that what Kai was wearing. Please say that he's wearing clothes at least everywhere. The archer was clad in a beautiful suit of ivory armor that seemed to be made out of impregnable scales. With a few insets of burnished, burnished bronze blazing between them with reflected sunlight. It was tied at the waist by a sash of burnt umber color, which emphasized the rich auburn splendor of his hair. The armor was made of dragon scales and was a transcendent memory Kai had received as a slaying the ivory dragon Semirax. Both Effie and Kai had come into possession of a transcendent armor in the second nightmare. Sunny used to have an armor like that too, which he had gotten for killing Sylvain for the first time. But of course, it had been destroyed by Goliath. And now he was the only person of the three without one! Oh, that really grinds my gears. <laughs> grinds my gears. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sonny winced, but was then distracted from the resigned self-pity by Jet, who smiled and stretched her hand out for a handshake. Ascended Nightingale, I don't think I've had the pleasure of meeting you before. Indeed, this was the first time the two of them met. Sonny glanced at Soul Reaper bleakly. At least she's not a fangirl, like someone I know. <laughs> Still, Jet had not even tried to shake ha Effie's hand. What was up with that? <laughs> I was thinking the same thing as well. <laughs> like, she doesn't like Effie. <laughs> the four of them exchanged a few words and headed for a larger tent that stood nearby, serving as the improvised strategy room for the small army. As they walked, Sunny briefly clasped forearm with Kai. Oh, <laughs> how are you? How are you doing, <laughs> Kai? <laughs> After the the things he had experienced in Falcon's God, Sunny held a somewhat different view of the charming archer, and of what his friend had shared with him in the sanctuary of Noctis. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. With like, how is Kai? How is Kai gonna take Antarctica after the nightmare when he had to be, like, like if this is like PTSD deluxe because he has to do it again, you know? Back then, he knew that Kai was deeply hurt by what had transpired in the Ivory City, both physically and mentally. He had been a centurion who led soldiers into a war against Sylvain's zealots, only to watch his soldiers die and disappear in the flames of the dragon, and then be crippled by those flames himself. Sunny had thought that the pain of defeating and becoming a cripple was what haunted his friend the most, but after experiencing the burden and privilege of being in command and learning how it felt to watch his people die, now he thought differently. Kai smiled softly. I am doing well. Thank you for asking, Sunny. But I really am. I feel like I'm in the right place. Sunny nodded, thinking that he understood. Kai had always had these naive notions of what was right and wrong, and what a good person was meant to do with the power all awake and possessed. For someone like him, coming to Antarctica was perhaps a very sincere endeavor. He glanced at Effie. Come to think of it, the Merry Huntress had lost people in the nightmare too. She watched all the other girls perish under the ruthless training methods of the War Maidens, powerless to save any of them. Even Cassie had experienced powerlessness and loss, with all the other priest priestesses and people of the Night Temple, including her cherished mentor, the one in the north, ending up slaughtered by Mordred. All of them had felt it. Did Nephis feel the same? Probably not. <laughs> probably not. I mean, she didn't. Probably not. <laughs> I don't think so either. I think she... I don't know what she... I don't know. She don't... No, I don't think so. <laughs> Maybe something, but it's not the same. It won't be the same. But then again, no one knew what she had lived through in the second nightmare. Changing Star was strangely... Reticent about the particular ordeal. They entered the tent, gathered 
What the fuck was she doing in Second Nightmare? Where was Nephis? I completely like. No, she wasn't there. She wasn't there, right? No, she wasn't. Because oh, I was like, what the fuck? Wait, what did she she even do? And I was like, she was gone. <laughs> she, we didn't even, yeah, she did her own riot. Because I was like, bro, I don't know. Right, because she wasn't even there. That's crazy that we still don't know what the fuck her second nightmare was. I hope that we will find out soon. I want to know what the fuck happened. She'll probably tell us at some point. They entered the tent, gathering around a fold-out table that had a small holographic projector placed on it. A typographic... A topographical map of the area was projected into the air, with their location and the last known whereabouts of the skull centipede marked on it red. Marked on it in red. <laughs> Sunny, however, paid it no attention. Still lost in his thoughts, after a while he shook them off and honed in on the conversation. Kai was speaking. There is simply no other path. The creature would definitely try to cross the river near the ford, and so that is where we will ambush it. Yet shook her head. You are mistaken. It is large enough to ford the river anywhere. Its minions don't breathe, so they can simply walk along the bottom and crawl out of the water on the other side. The current is nowhere near strong enough to be an obstacle for them. The charming archer sighed, then nodded. That is correct. Which was why I said near the ford, not directly using the ford. Listen to me, idiot! <laughs> the landscape is going to push the tyrant into this general area, but we have no way of knowing where exactly will enter the river. Sunny frowned, already sensing where this was going. So, what is the plan then? Effie chuckled. Well, what else? Since we don't know where it's going, we'll just have to make sure that it comes to where we want it to come. <laughs> Easy peasy. <laughs> Sunday let out a reassigned signed sigh. So, who is going to be the bait? Effie awkwardly scratched the back of her head. I mean, you don't have to if you don't want to. <laughs> it's like, please, why are you even asking, bro? He remained silent for a moment and scoffed. I smile a little. <laughs> Honestly, it can be any of us. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Master Jet. I'm afraid I'm not entirely familiar with your capabilities. What I meant to say was that Effie, Sunny, and I all have ways of making sure that we survive leading the creature to the ambush. So any of us there, any of us three can go. Sunny slowly shook his head. No, I'll go. I have to contribute at an earlier stage of the battle, because I might not be of much use at the later stage. It was true. With how close Sonny was to forming the fifth core, chances were that he would pass the threshold right in the middle of a furious melee. Ooh! If that happened, he would have to struggle to simply stay alive. As for being useful, he was not sure if he'd be able to do anything at all. Oh! <gasps> Imagine if that happens now! <gasps> I didn't think it would happen this fast. Then again, he's super close. That would be insane. Well, now he will because he brought it up. Oh. Chapter 1087. War Masters. The pallid centipede was slithering across a desolate landscape, followed by an army of abominable bone creatures. Its massive body tore forward, leaving a trail of destruction in its wake. The ground was pierced and upturned by its thousand sharp legs. The ancient boulders shattered. The brooks of clear water spoiled with and turned into streams of poison. Soon, a wide river appeared in the distance. The ghastly tyrant did not slow down, continuing its ruin ru ruinous advance. Then, however, sorry I'm laughing, I read what Tag read it. <laughs> I read what Tag read in chat. Kill some soldiers to form a new core now. <laughs> insane <laughs> he's like so i might be turning soon so which ones are your least favorite soldiers <laughs> oops i'm sorry they kind of i don't know they got lost i lost them um uh... <laughs> but i'm uh i i've evolved now so uh <laughs> it's a good strat <laughs> oh my god <laughs> insane 
very funny. Then, however, the monstrous centipede slowed down. Its appalling head swiveled, rising into the air. Its harrowing maw opened. The branches of the dead trees that served as a creature's horns swayed slight lightly in the wind. The wind had brought with it a strange sound. The distant weeping of a flute. <laughs> the centipede lingered for a few moments, then suddenly changed direction, lunging toward the source of the discordant sound. It did not have eyes, but the black eye sockets of the countless skulls forming its carapace seemed to radiate dark, ineffable malice. The corrupted tyrant pursued the source of the simple melody. However, the flute played remained elusive like a ghost. Sometimes the creature seemed to draw near the player, but he always managed to slip away at the last moment. All it found were empty shadows. However, at some point, the pursuit came to an end. The hideous centipede had almost reached the river by that point. In front of it was a natural ford formed by a line of enormous boulders, with only their tops emerging from the water. On the opposite side of the river, a lone human was sitting cross-legged on a stone, playing a strange emerald flute. It was a young man with pale skin and dark hair, wearing a tunic of black silk. Sunday did not pay any attention to the harrowing centipede and continued to play the flute. His fingers moved nimbly, but the melody he created was pretty rough, to say the least. He sighed. I thought I improved, but maybe not. On the other shore, the tyrant froze for a second, then rushed forward. The creature dove into the river, raising a towering wave, and its soldiers followed. Some of the bone abominations jumped heavily across the boulders. Most simply dove into the cold water after their ruler. This is literally like that Swedish fucking forest monster that Sunny is right now. It's called Necken in Swedish. I don't know what it's called in English, but it's literally just a fucking nude person <laughs> uh sitting a, a like in a in a body of water at least like in the forest on a rock or something to uh, lure out people to drown <laughs> <laughs> let me see what it's called it's called the neck yeah it's a water sprite but we call it a neck and um a humanoid shapeshifter it has many names, but Scandinavian folklore. <laughs> so I was like, oh, <laughs> he's doing this. <laughs> it's, a, it's a, for us, it's like, a, it's a, the Nordic version of the neck, right? Or whatever you want to call it. Then it's like, a, it's a male, like a water spirits that play like enchanting songs on the, oh, okay, fine. It wasn't a flute. It's a violin. Anyway, I think I remember it's a flute, though. It might differ. And it, it, that draws, like, women and kids <laughs> into the to lakes and bodies of water to drown. <laughs> Literally sunny right now. So I was like, oh, I know this. Anyway, now you learn some Nordic folklore <laughs> about the neck. <laughs> You're welcome. On the other shore, the tyrant froze for a second, then rushed forward. The creature dove into the river, raising a towerful, towering wave, and its soldiers followed. Some of the bone abominations jumped heavily across the boulders. Most simply dove into the cold water after their ruler. Sunny waited for a moment, then dismissed the bone singer and looked at the sky. The sun was still visible, but since it was close to the horizon, its light was dim. Hello, Sai. Welcome, welcome. Hello. Ah. <laughs> As he watched, several things happened at the same time. First, a series of explosions thundered, demolishing the boulders of the fort. Giant mount fountains of water rose into the air. Second, hundreds of human figures rose from the trenched trenches dug higher up the slope. Third, a barrage of artillery shells and tungsten rounds descended upon the bone abominations from beyond the hills. The creatures shuddered, but resisted the mundane implements of war. Their progress, however, was slowed. That was when the Awakened attacked. 
Numerous enchanted arrows and magical projectiles rained on the soldiers of the Skull Centipede's army. This time, the damage was apparent. A hulking creature that had just fallen into the river exploded into hundreds of bone fragments. Another lost a limb. Yet another one was suddenly covered by a layer of sizzling amber liquid that corroded the bones, eating through them like acid. And more, much more. But that was just a start. Even though that initial salvo destroyed dozens of dreadful abominations, there were many hundreds of them left. There was the tyrant itself as well. A beautiful figure that seemed to be cast of steel appeared in the slope in front of the trenches, wielding a spear and a large round shield. Her voice boomed across the battlefield, filling the hearts of the soldiers with maddened fervor. Wolves, prepare for war! Let's go, Effie! Sonny turned his head and glanced at Effie, feeling his blood boil from her battle cry. As he did, a strange thing happened. He suddenly felt exhilarating power rush into his body. It was as though he was suddenly as mighty as a ferocious beast, as resilient as a granite wall, and as sharp as a steel sword. And that was not just a feeling. His strength, speed, endurance, and resilience did indeed undergo a striking improvement. It was as though his body had received a comprehensive overhaul, becoming so much more suited for battle. Incredible. Every time he was exposed to Effie's ascended ability, Sunny couldn't help but feel awed. For him, who had already enjoyed the augmentation of the shadows, the physical boost was not that pronounced. But for the awakened soldiers, and especially mundane humans, it must have been a true blessing. The most frightening part, however, was that his ability had no limit to how many people could be empowered by it. Anyone who saw Effie and was deemed an ally by her would receive its benefit. Their number did not even affect the rate with which she consumed essence. The only detriment, albeit a small one, was that the soldiers had to maintain a line of sight with their commander to enjoy the boon of her power. However, considering that Effie almost always preferred to fight on the front line, that was usually not a problem. Just as he had expected, the eyes of the soldiers ignited with burning resolve at the sound of her voice. The soldiers of her company suddenly raised their heads and let out boisterous howls, acting like an army of actual wolves. <laughs> okay, calm down. <laughs> and then another voice joined them. This one was sonorous and clear, easily drowning out all the rest. Kai's voice. When Sonny heard it, his heart, his heart suddenly shook. Instantly, all the unnecessary thoughts were erased from his head leaving only the pure, flaming, indomitable desire to do battle. Even though this change was not physical, it might have been even more profound than the empowerment of Effie's aspect, because it affected the heart. Even Sunny, for whom the effect was somewhat muted because of how guarded his mind and soul were, felt incredibly inspired. The clarity bestowed by Kai's call would do wonders for the soldiers in this battle. Sunny shook his head slightly. Scary. Kai's ability was just too terrifying. An Ascended would most likely be able to resist it to some degree, but Mera Awakened had no choice but to be compelled. As for mundane humans, if the handsome art enchanter chose to misuse his powers, they would do anything he told them to. They would happily end their lives if he asked. Luckily, Kai would never do that. Instead, he used his power to inspire the soldiers and make them stronger. With Sunny serving as a perfect scout, Effie strengthening the body of the soldiers, and Kai inspiring their hearts, the threat of the corrupted tyrant suddenly did not seem overwhelming. Now, sure. As the head of the skull centipede emerged from the water, it was met with a furious onslaught of attacks. Strengthened by their two leaders, the small army was burning with the desire and ability to win this battle. Chapter 1088, Force Multiplier Before, the future seemed grim for the expedition force of the evacuation army. Even though they numbered more than 2,000 soldiers, with 200 awakened and 4 masters already all, well, four masters ready to fight at the front, the enemy was just too domineering. The corrupted tyrant itself was tremendously dangerous. The army of bone monstrosities was no less threatening. However, both Effie and Kai were, incredibly, were incredible sources of strength, acting as force multipliers for the whole regiment. With their help, the power of the soldiers soared, 
almost balancing the scale. Sunny's and Jet's efforts were no less important. Thanks to them, the two companies had been able to choose the battlefield and prepare an ambush. Terrain advantage was extremely valuable, and so was the foreign knowledge of what the enemy was capable of. That last part was perhaps the most precious. The two scouts had not only gathered intelligence about the location of the enemy and the number of minions under its rule, they had also provided the analysts and diviners of the army with an opportunity to study the tyrant. Thanks to that, the human force did not have to go into the battle blind. Even though they did not know every detail of what the Skull Centipede was capable of, they did know the most important parts. For example, they knew that the confluence of the power that the giant abomination possessed was, surprisingly, hidden in the two dead skeletal trees that grew from its head, serving as the tyrant's crown and horns. In fact, army command had gone as far as to suggest that the true abomination was not the centipede itself, but the network of the tree roots that permeated its monstrous skull, growing through the creature's brain matter. I was gonna say, like, no, it's the thingy in the, the, sh the chimney! <laughs> As such, the small army's first goal was to destroy one, or better yet, both of these trees. Without them, the tyrant would most likely lose the ability to control its bone soldiers, as well as access, as well as access to its most terrifying powers. But it was more easily said than done. And Sunny currently had other things to worry about, because the centipede was going directly for him. Ignoring the squall of bullets and the rain of arrows, it rose from the river like a mountain of skulls and launched straight at him, the giant maw opening like an abyssal gate. Sunny blinked. Are my flute skills really that atrocious? Listen, there's really no need to be that angry. <laughs> oh my God. A moment before the dreadful tyrant crashed into the boulder he was sitting on, Sunny leaned back and dissipated into the shadows. The centipede plunged down, shattering the ancient stone and turning it to dust. Stone shards and a great deal, deal of dirt flew into the air, rising like a cloud. Sunny finished a backward roll much further up the slope, appearing behind the trenches and the mass of soldiers. He rose, flicked a few pieces of dust off his tunic and glanced in the direction of the giant abomination. The skull centipede turned its head into the direction of the firing soldiers, its jaw still hung, hanging open. Then its enormous body tensed, ready to shoot forward. Before it could, however, something flashed through the air and impacted against the tyrant's head. The mysterious projectile was none other than Effie, who had used her own body as a siege ram. After rushing through the battlefield like a hurricane, she jumped and made her body into a ball, hiding it behind the round shield. When the dusk shard struck the tyrant, numerous skulls were instantly pulverized into bone dust. However, even more were revealed, becoming visible through the crack in the morbid carapace. The force of the impact was so tremendous that it not only slowed the centipede down, it actually threw the abomination back, pushing it back into the river. Effie herself was tossed to the ground and landed in a roll, jumping back to her feet a moment later. Her sculpted steel body did not look damaged at all. If anything, the hunters looked as exuberant and robust as ever. As her war cry resounded across the battlefield, the first wave of the hulking bone abominations crashed ag clashed against the line of Awakened. A ferocious melee exploded into a cacophony of ear-piercing noise. The tide of nightmare creatures seemed unstoppable, as if, it would, as if it would easily wash the human fighters away in a wave of desperation and blood, but it didn't. The first reason for that was Jet, who threw herself into the flood of abominations a few moments before the clash and broke the enemy's momentum. Her naginata easily passed through the layers of bone, destroying the rotten souls of the tyrant's minion. <laughs> minions. Both the bone puppets and Soul Reaper herself could be considered living dead. However, even among the dead, she, went ex she was an exalted existence. The second reason was the Awakened themselves. Even though most of the ghastly abominations were fallen, it barely looked as if there was a gap of power between them and the human fighters. Empowered by a race by wolves and embold emboldened by Nightingale, the soldiers fought with might and ferocity that was far beyond what they should have been capable of. It was really quite astonishing to see. Sunny shifted a little. Time for me to enter the fray as well, I guess. 
He had to act restrained in the battle, however. That did not mean that he couldn't do anything. More and more bone fiends were crawling out of the river, and the skull centipede itself had already recovered from Effie's devastating blow. It was lunging forward once again, this time aiming for the ironclad huntress. Sunny opened a leather satchel that hung on the silk cord tied around his waist and looked, took out a small, intricately engraved stone lantern. Then he tossed it across the battlefield, aiming for the line where the shore met the cold water. As soon as the shadow lantern landed, it was as though all light was devour devoured from the wide area around it. Many bone abominations entered the sphere of darkness, however none of them emerged again, as if swallowed by the shadows. Well, of course they didn't. After all, out there in the darkness, unseen, Saint was already waiting for them with the Sin of Solace in her hand. After unleashing her on the battlefield, Sunny concentrated on using Shadow Manifestation to reduce pressure on the soldiers. He tried not to destroy any of the Bone Abominations himself, maiming and suppressing them instead. Despite his efforts, however, a generous stream of Shadow Fragments poured into his soul, threatening to render him defenseless too soon. Sunny frowned, and looked in the direction where Effie was trying to distract the skull centipede and prevent it from reaching the trenches. She was holding the tyrant at bay, rarely, for now. A dark grimace appeared in his face. It's all up to Kai, then. High above the battlefield, hidden by the cold radiance of the sun, a small black dot was slowly growing larger. Chapter 1089 Falling Star Effie was having a hard time standing her ground against the giant centipede. In fact, she was barely holding on. Even though a furious, furry, furious barrage of bullets, enchanted arrows, and magical projectiles was raining on the ghastly carapace of skulls, the abomination did not seem slowed down at all. Its massive body moved with dire speed, thousands of scythe-like legs tearing up the ground with each motion. The difference in size between the tyrant and the fearless huntress was just too big. Effie's only saving grace was that her body, despite being hundreds of times smaller than that of the ghastly centipede, seemed to contain truly astounding strength. She was incredibly swift and agile as well, dashing around with stunning speed to dodge the crushing blows of the monstrous creature. Above everything else, the huntress was all but invulnerable. Her inner resilience was reinforced by two aspect, and <laughs> by two aspect abilities, and then strengthened by a transcendent armor on top of that. She had received several glancing blows from the abomination, which would have turned around... What? <laughs> I make up words, I swear. Which would have turned almost any other master into a broken corpse. Effie, however, was able to shake them off and continue to fight. Of course, there was no such thing as true invulnerability. The huntress was fine for now, but she was still dancing with death. The round shield she wielded possessed an enchantment called Indomitable, which functioned similar to Sunny's own Feather of Truth, and allowed Effie to change his weight as well. Her spear was not able to deal serious wounds to the tyrant, but its strikes must have stung. Sunny saw the creature recoiling after the hunters managed to land a solid blow. All that allowed Raised by Wolves to tie down the skull centipede, at least for a short while. However, it did not mean that she, could, she would win. It took all Effie had to simply match the menace of the corrupted tyrant's massive body, all her abilities, all her skill, and all her powerful memories, while the abomination had not revealed any of its powers yet. Once it did, the situation would inevitably change. And that moment had already come. As Sunny watched, Effie managed to push the centipede back once again. The shockwave of the impact threw her back as well. The huntress slid through the dirt, leaving two grooves groves in it. Her spear shot down, piercing the ground and bringing her to a sudden stop. A moment later, she, had already, she was already lunging forward, ready to deliver another strike. However, the tyrants seemed to be fed up with their furious clash. The skull centipede raised its appalling head, the branches of the dead trees growing from the carapace of skulls swinging in the wind. Sunny's eyes widened slightly as he felt a sudden chill run down his spine. It was as though the wind that brushed against the skeletal branches was full of tormented whispers. A small black dot appeared in the air between the two trees. The dot warped and twisted, collapsing in on itself, and then began to grow. 
devouring the fabric of reality itself. It seemed as if an abyssal gate was starting to open in the air above the creature's head. Crap! Sun instantly knew that nothing good was going to happen if the circle of dar darkness was allowed to finish forming. It made a move to step forward. But at that moment, a stream of light tore the sky asunder, falling from somewhere high above with inconceivable speed. It streaked across the battlefield like a flaming comet and crossed paths with the centipede's head, exploding with blinding radiance. A low boom resounded, followed by the sound of shattering wood. Kai had arrived. The plan of the battle the four masters had come up with assigned each of them an important role. Sunny was responsible for luring the tyrant to the ambush site and creating an obstacle for the bone fiends crawling out of the river. Jet was meant to lead the defenders and make sure that the trenches were not overrun. Effie's role was to stall the centipede, and more importantly, distract it. But it was Kai who was the key to their success. Or failure. <laughs> or failure. <laughs> Hopefully not. The whole plan depended on whether the tyrant would be able to unleash its harrowing powers. To prevent, to prevent it from happening and reduce the skull centipede to a mere giant beast, the trees growing from its head had to be destroyed. That was what Kai had to accomplish. He had hidden himself high in the sky and bid his time, waiting for an opportune, opportune moment. Then the archer plunged down, burning his essence and using gravity to reach truly astonishing speed. And now he delivered his attack, using that speed to close the trap they had set. The flaming comet was Kai himself, and he held a slender, shining saber in his hand. All of it happened in the blink of an eye. The streak of light crossed the creature's head, something flashed, and then a loud explosion boomed, washing over the battlefield. A split second later, Kai fell into the river. His speed was still so tremendous that he slid across the surface of the water without plunging into it, and only slowed down after being pushed a hundred meters away from the shore. The head of the skull centipede, meanwhile, was flung to the side. One of the dead trees crowning it was completely shattered, its trunk exploding into thousands of sharp splinters. The circle of darkness collapsed and disappeared without a trace, never receiving the chance to fully form. Sunny let out a relieved sigh. It worked. The tyrant opened its maw, letting out a blood-shilling screech. The bone fiend trembled, becoming disorganized and somewhat sluggish. The soldiers roared with dark glee, invigorated by the sight of the giant creature losing one of his horns. Effie was already advancing, her spear ready to strike. Kai managed to regain his balance and pushed himself off the surface of the water, shooting back into the sky and summoning his bow. A black arrow suddenly shot out of the cloud of darkness surrounding the shadow lantern. Empowered by Sane's transcendent strength and the Death Dealer enchantment, the arrow struck the neck of the tyrant with harrowing force, annihilating layers of skulls and ripping a huge chunk of flesh out of it. However, Sunday did not pay any of it much attention, because right at that moment, a spell whispered into his ear, oh, Is he transforming? <gasps> you have slain a fallen monster, malignant root sapling. Malignant? Malignant. Your shadow grows stronger. Sunny froze, his face turning deathly pale. Here we go again. The voice of the spell grew louder. Your shadow is overflowing with power. <gasps> ah! Sunny transforming! Oh my god! We will see how the transformation goes next time.